Hey what's up guys, TechTiron here and I'm back again with a brand new video. So before I begin this one, as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching my content. If this is your first time on the channel, don't make it your last, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, leave a thumbs up, it helps out the channel more than you think. So all my social media will be linked in the description below. So let's go ahead and talk about the underrated phone and that is the OnePlus Nord N35 G. I did a review on it way back when, I'll leave it linked in the description. But basically, this phone is such a good phone, but it kind of went under, under the radar, and I'll do my best to kind of explain why. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this design. So with the Nord N30, OnePlus kind of took the approach of giving us this kind of near mirror finish that looks absolutely beautiful, don't get me wrong. However, as soon as you touch it, you kind of ruin the experience for yourself. So this phone is going to be such a huge fingerprint magnet. So if you want my opinion, I do highly recommend kind of a clear case if you still want to show off this beautiful near mirror finish, especially on a phone that costs 299 MSRP. That's that's a beautiful design in my opinion. Uh, honestly, at first I wasn't really feeling it just because of how many fingerprints I was able to get on the phone and I had to constantly clean it every time I want to film the phone. But obviously, because I trying to you know show off the phone as best as i can as far as the design goes that's why it was just kind of hard to review however when you slap a clear case on it i feel like it will solve all your problems but the main highlight of this phone it lies within the camera itself which we will definitely highlight later on in the video but basically this gives you a 108 megapixel main sensor along with two other sensors within the camera itself of course your led flash now mind you that this camera is since it's 108 megapixel sensor it will protrude quite a bit so if you plan on putting this phone on kind of a flat surface it's just not going to happen um a case again will help with that situation okay as far as your ports go you do have a headphone jack believe it or not you still were able to retain a headphone jack in 2023 in a phone like this you also get the super fast wired 50 watt charger as and charger is included in the box as well as your bottom facing speaker which is loud and very good we will take also a listen to that later on in the video as far as your buttons go you do have your power button on the right hand side and the volume up and down on the left hand side they're decent binds they're not really the most tactiles that i've used but they work fairly well for their intended purposes and if you look at the sides of the phone itself you'll see that this has kind of a squared off design that will help with the grip and give the phone kind of a thin look and feel so this phone was comfortable to hold in the hand for the most part i didn't really find any issues with it however because of the glossy mirror finish on the back it was slippery if you hold it as is without kind of a cover or a case so so far there's no issue with the design i feel like it looks really good other than the fact that the back is very slippery and catches fingerprints that's a situation that can definitely be avoided so next up let's talk a little bit about the display of this device so what oneplus provided us with is a 6.72 inch 2400 by 1080p display and this display has kind of a positives and negatives. So the positives are this. You do get 120 hertz refresh rate. You get an in-display fingerprint sensor that's fairly reliable. And the negatives is the fact that this time around, what OnePlus did, instead of the Nord N20, which had all a display, we do get an IPS LCD. Don't get me wrong, it's a very good IPS panel. However, it's still IPS. It's not kind of at the top of the line display, but like i said don't get too upset it still is a very good display for what it's worth so very sharp vivid and i do want to say that it does get fairly bright in outdoor conditions but not as bright as an oled display and for a phone that only costs 299 again i have to remind you that you do get the ability to have up to 120 hertz refresh rate so you can either choose to have it as a standard high at all time or if you want the standard 60 hertz which will help save battery you can choose that obviously i'd rather use the 120 hertz take advantage of what this phone is capable of doing as far as you know watching videos browsing the web going through social media this display is going to do its job perfectly so the only complaint that i have about it is that it's kind of a downgrade from the previous generation which has an oled display but i guess the 120 hertz is supposedly supposed to is supposed to, I guess, make up for it. I don't know. You tell me if that's the case. As far as the speaker goes here, take a listen to it and I'll get back to you on some words regarding the speaker.
depth sensor. Now, as far as your front-facing camera, you do get a 16 megapixel at f2.4. That supports also HDR and panorama, and it does shoot video at 1080p at 30 frames per second, but so for the most part the speaker does sound pretty good and overall though as a display and speaker combination i feel like this phone did a decent job obviously like i said it was a little bit of a downgrade from previous generation that had an oled screen but you still have the in display fingerprint sensor that is fairly quick and for the most part reliable it may be a hit or miss from time to time but for the most part again a very reliable fingerprint sensor now let's switch the topic of conversation and talk a little bit about the camera system Alright, so the big story here is the 108 megapixel sensor. And when it comes to, if you really want to zoom into your pictures and crop them as much as you can, then this is the type of sensor that is for you. And it does a pretty decent job when it comes to the crop. However though, my issue with this sensor is its image quality and the way that it processes images. It's not, in, in good lighting conditions, you can produce some decent pictures, which is nice. But I would say that the 108 megapixel, I feel like is kind of a wasted opportunity for this phone i feel like if oneplus kind of focused a little bit more on image quality and video capability i feel like this would be something to look up to when it comes to camera smartphones in the kind of 299 300 range however though overall though as an experience it's pretty decent and i'm not trying to sound really harsh it's just i wish that kind of oneplus focused a little bit more on image quality and actual video capability to give this phone kind of an edge and one other thing that i want to say also about the eight about that 108 megapixel um, sensor is this so if you by default this camera can only shoot at 12 megapixels so whenever you get the phone out of the box if you really want to use 108 megapixels you have to manually toggle it on and if you do each picture will run you around 26 to 28 megabytes so it's going to eat up storage eventually so keep that in mind so let's go ahead and transition to the performance real quick so the spec list is as follows you get an octa-core snapdragon 695 chip Virtual 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, and a 5000 mAh battery. The story behind the experience of the performance on this phone is as simple as this. OnePlus always knows how to do performance right. Now keep in mind that this is, at the end of the day, $299 phone. And for that price, it performs, I would say, better than the other phones that are at the same cost. So this phone, when it comes to benchmark, it gave us a single core of 907 and a multi-core of 2093. And I would say I would compare this to the a54 5g i would say the a54 is a little bit better in as far as benchmark scores and as far as the performance but again the a54 is a more expensive phone so opening up apps closing them browsing the web especially accompanied with the 120 hertz refresh rate it does a really really good job and even playing games and testing this phone to its fullest i didn't really notice a lot of heating issues or anything like that so for the most part the performance on this phone was really nice now over time it did kind of slow down but it wasn't kind of significant to where it was really slow or sluggish or laggy it still is and i think it will be a decent performing device so thumbs up for that and the battery life on here was pretty good for the most part i made it last more than a day and especially the fact that you get a 50 watt wired charging is insane so you can top this phone off really quickly no problem so thumbs up for oneplus for doing that i really feel like this phone when it comes to the price performance aspect it nails it very very well okay so here's my conclusion when it comes to the oneplus nord n30 so should you consider it in 2024 first that belongs that the answer to that question is up to you would i consider it um kind of but i feel like in 2024 we're gonna get a lot more options and hopefully the oneplus nord n40 would be a more superior option and it would actually bring some more welcoming changes to the kind of nord lineup however I feel like this is kind of a phone that went under the radar and I just had to make this video to update you guys on the OnePlus Nord N30. So with that being said, I would like to thank you all so much for watching my content. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe and be part of this channel, you're more than welcome to do so. It's really great to have your all support. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching.